This is a case of a 60-year-old male with persistent atrial fibrillation for over 10 years, hypothyroidism, hypertension, previous heavy alcohol use, who's a current smoker. He had sudden onset of dyspnea on exertion two weeks prior to his admission that has markedly worsened. He also has a 20-pound weight gain and severe lower extremity edema on admission. On exam, he had mild jugular venous distension with a heart that was irregular and irregular, consistent with atrial fibrillation, but with a harsh 2 over 6 systolic murmur, best heard at the left sternal border. His lungs had bi-basal arouse, and his extremities had 3 to 4 plus pitting edema with varicosities. His lab work showed normal CBC, a creatinine that was elevated at 1.6, and an INR that was 3.0, consistent with his chronic cumin use. His LFTs were normal. A four-chamber TE was performed because of the heart murmur and the recent heart failure, showing an abnormality protruding into the right atrium. With color flow, you can see flow tracking from the aortic valve region over to the right atrium, consistent with a sinus of Valsalva aneurysm. Here's another view showing that fistula formation of flow going into the right atrium. Here's another view of the aorta, again showing the signs of Valsalva defect from the non-coronary sinus protruding into the right atrium. Color flow shows the same view now. The windsock abnormality is a classic finding of the signs of Valsalva aneurysm, where the redundant tissue protrudes into the receiving chamber of the fistula formation that can occur. Here's the same view with color added to that. Here's another nice view of the windsock deformity protruding from the non coronary sinus into the right atrium. And again with color flow analysis you can see the fistula formation causing the left to right shunt and the resultant right-sided heart failure. Due to his predisposing risk factors for coronary disease, he was taken to the cardiac cath lab where triple vessel coronary disease was identified. Based on this, he was scheduled for surgery the next morning for three vessel cabbage and also patch closure of his signs of Valsalva aneurysm. At the time of surgery, you can see here the left part of this video it shows his head with the aorta and the right side would be his towards his feet with the aortic cannulation and bicable venous cannulas placed to support the patient during procedure. You can see distension of the right atrium and right ventricle due to the right side of the heart failure. And at the time of commencement of cardiopulmonary bypass, you can see marked decrease in the volume of the right atrium here as the patient is drained out and placed on full cardiopulmonary bypass support. Inspection of the right atrium was then performed showing the swan gans catheter passing through the tricuspid valve and we searched and looked inside the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle to make sure there wasn't an associated ventricular septal defect which can occur in up to 60 percent of the patients. At this time we also noticed an abnormal defect just below the swan gans catheter but on the right atrial side of the tricuspid valve and this was uh, not expected and therefore to delineate our anatomy we gave cardioplegia in the aorta showing the windsock deformity and the fistula formation where the signs of Valsalva aneurysm now is protruding into the right atrium and leaking cardioplegia blood from the aorta into the right atrium. This helped uh, clarify the anatomy and also allow us to then realize that after stopping the cardioplegia and looking at and drying out the surgical field that this hole was actually an osteum premium atrial septal defect and we were looking directly at the anterior leaf of the mitral valve through this defect here. The windsock was in grafts with pickups and you can see it's a very delicate structure and then it was carefully excised using Metzenbaum scissors 
to clarify the edges of the healthy tissue and allow patch closure. A piece of core matrix was then used to help patch the defects and one large piece was utilized to patch the Ostium Premium ASD shown in this video and then to extend over onto the signs of Valsalva defect. A small rim of aortic annulus tissue as a bridge was seen between these two defects and this was used to sew the patch in between and separate the two different defects to prevent any fistula or drainage between those two. The suture line was then completed with the cord matrix tissue over top the signs of Valsalva aneurysm. It was then tested by administering more cardioplegia into the aorta and you can see there's no leak from the patch and you can see some blood welling up in the lower part of the screen and that's from the coronary sinus draining in into the right atrium. In review of signs of Valsalva aneurysms, they are usually congenital due to the weakness that forms at the junction of the aortic media and the annulus of the aortic valve. They are rarely acquired and can be from infection, atherosclerosis, or trauma. 30 to 60 percent of these signs of Valsalva aneurysms may have an associated ventricular septal defect with the perimembranous type of VSD most common in Western countries. They usually remain asymptomatic if not ruptured, although they may cause arrhythmias, congenital heart block, I mean, excuse me, complete heart block or chest pain due to obstruction of flow from the aneurysm itself. Ruptures most commonly occur from the right coronary sinus in 65 to 85% of cases, rarely from the left in less than 5%, with the right ventricle being the most common receiving chamber in 80 90% of the cases from either the right coronary sinus or from the non-coronary sinus themselves.